Um, we want to, um, ad additions uh, to the agenda. Um, I'd like to discuss the Driftway Park very briefly. Um, the open space parking areas, Penny's going to fill us in on that, and the discussion on 38 Central Ave. I'd like to add those to the agenda. 38 Central? Yeah. And just tell everybody how wonderful the dam turned out. And the dam. <laughs> I make a motion we accept the agenda with the add-ons. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, so why don't we start with um, Mr. Washburn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to How are you? Some of you again and meet the other two folks in the room. Um, so if everybody doesn't know, um, Mr. Washburn, Brad is our uh, new director of planning. Uh, planning and development. development. So, oh, yeah. congratulations! Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. So I just wanted to come tonight, introduce myself to the commission, and see if you have any questions for me, or you know, just just to kind of again, I be working with Amy and Pat and other folks in our newly created department, which will include Nancy from our coastal resource officer, and also Bob Vogel and staff in the building department. So, um, I'm only three weeks in, but just trying to get situated here and get uh, kind of acclimated and hit the ground running. So uh, and as you may know, our, our town planner just recently left. Her last day was last Friday. So I think in the interim, I'll be doing a lot of planning board activities. But when we backfill that position, I anticipate kind of stepping back a little bit and doing what I was intended to do of more um, kind of internal coordination, collaboration, and then kind of do more big, big picture stuff, if you will. Sure. Excellent. Well, we were. Um, supportive of, of the position yes. and um, are anxious for this to start to take place. Um, there's a lot going on in Situate and uh, to have someone help coordinate all those efforts. And I think it'll help um, the users, the, the folks in town as they come before the different commissions to help coordinate that. So we're, we're really looking forward to it. And your expertise um, will help them. Great. Sure. Did I understand today that you came from CZM? Yes. So um, Interesting. Pri so prior to coming for the town of Situate, I was with Coastal Zone Management for eight years. Yeah. I um, was their assistant director and was also the Boston Harbor Regional Coordinator. So as many of you know, Jason. Yes. Previously, I was the Boston, kind of his Boston counterpart. Um, also worked for the town of Easton for a couple of years as their planning director. Uh, worked for the city of Boston and their redevelopment authority, and then did some few very short stints in the private sector. Great. So, so how did you end up in the South Shore? Uh, my wife. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> one. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So no, we're happy though. We live in Norwell, next town over. Um, two and two small city. kids, and uh, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, we're, we're same town. A little concerned about that Norwell influence in this. Between Karen, Kevin, <laughs> Amy. Amy. <laughs> they the were town. part of Situate at one South Situate, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so we're dragging you back over. Yeah. So, Brad, um, not a lot, I'm not looking for a long answer, but as you've been here three weeks, what are the top two or three priorities that you've got to jump all over? Uh, well, right now, I think it's kind of getting situated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting to know my staff, getting to know the boards and committees. Um, I think it's important to just catch up on the, you know, your current projects. Certainly Toll Brothers is a kind of a cross-cutting project that I'm trying to engage myself in. Um, so, I mean, that's really it. I'm not trying to kind of overachieve in these first few weeks. I think it's important to listen um, and just talk to folks who I can get up to speed so that, you know, moving forward, you know, we have a lot of big initiatives on the planning board. Um, we certainly have projects, but we're talking about, you know, we have uh, the master plan update is one of the big items on our next agenda. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, I'm not trying to, to move too quickly here. I'm trying to do it right and just um, take my time. Great. Thanks. Awesome. Anybody else? Do you see any plans to upgrade in the kind of the IT department? Uh, that, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily within my... Well, things that, just yet. No, the department's network, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he's younger, so I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. This is a dig at the previous agents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit of a, well, I don't want to say technology dinosaur, but I'm 
guess more on the old fashioned costume. Oh, no, 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 he's it. a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. No, we had a recurring uh, meeting invite. Yes. Today, so that was, that was a big jump. Yes. So we have Outlook meeting invites. And, um, and again, I think this new departmental structure is kind of a new thing uh, where we'll be covering planning and zoning, building. Um, conservation and Nancy, our, our coastal resource officer. So, figuring out that new structure is um, kind of a, a new and exciting challenge. I think it makes sense because yeah. they all they all touch each other. Yeah, and, and I think you know we're trying to just avoid the the silo effect, and again, just kind of get that kind of collaboration internally, and then, mm -hmm. like you said, um, Mr. Chairman, just kind of expanding that into what's going out in the community. It's going to be it's all going to be good in my mind. Yep. Yep. Sure, it's it's a positive uh, positive move. That's for sure. A lot of changes in town hall. The town administrator is um, is stepping out, and so there's a lot of a lot of moving pieces at the moment. But yeah, yeah. good. And we were at. Uh, we can segue into the Hunter's yeah. Pond Dam piece. You had a chance to see. Uh, I mean, we've we've had some good positive things happening in town. You know, Definitely. in different places. I was amazed at the number of people that turned out for that. Every agency, I think, was representative. It. Yeah, it's nice to it was interesting to me, and I was involved in it all along, but I didn't realize there were 16 different agencies in order to get that project done. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. 16. <laughs> well, from my perspective, it, w it was nice just to be part of the feel good, you know, yeah. part of the job, which is not very often because so many times. You know, it's pretty negative and mundane. People don't really want you, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it, 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 educating people, though, getting folks involved, when the thought was that the pond would, pardon me, disappear, a lot of people turned out against it and then came to realize all the complications with A, keeping the dam, and then B, the environmental mm -hmm. um, benefit of removing it. Yeah. And once enough people got their head around it. Right. We still had somebody march down at the end of the day and say, why don't they take a... <laughs> <laughs> but, but by and large... Oh, yeah. It, it's going to be really nice. Come a year or two from now, the vegetation is already starting to switch over. All the tall stuff, the water plants, the, that's all dying off in the middle. And you have all those new plants are growing already so it's going to be very interesting and we'll see how many birds mm -hmm. show up and then if the fish start yeah. moving upstream there so it's right. all good no, it's, it's all good. positive it, it's change people don't like change yeah you know but um it's going to be a new phase that's i think the you know the interaction with all those different agencies oh, and yeah. then just kind of uncovering all those funding opportunities so looking for those opportunities moving forward i think is something that you know we look forward to doing because um, that's how you get things done well because that was not a cheap cheap project and basically it costs the town out of yes it is taxpayer dollars are the grants that's how a lot of them are funded but it isn't out of the local tax revenue you know it was very very min minimal what we did mm -hmm. a lot was in kind work too with some, some of the grants <coughs> so it was wonderful to see you know if, if you look if you know the right people to get in touch with they can get the money for it. so we did a little lobbying for Stuart Brook with a few people yes <laughs> see how it goes. yeah well we might as well try sure why not see if we can clean something else up oh well, that's good well congratulations right. on well, your thank you. new welcome. position and welcome yeah. Great, thank you. I look forward to working with all of you, and uh, you know, and then with all our staff in the department as well. So, if you ever need anything, you know where I, I am. We'll find. At least you. this week, I've moved twice already. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get yeah, your cell phone. It is a moving target around. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Um, we got about five more minutes before we can start with any notices. We don't have any IDAs tonight. No. Um, the uh, show cause hearing for Kelleher is it? I, you had gotten a call. I had gotten a call. The engineer for Kelleher has putting to get was putting together the um, an NOI for that work and some work on the house, but didn't have it completed. I guess there's been a wetland scientist um, has flagged it, and they're asking that they could file and be at our next meeting. 
and after so, the fact. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I know Pat had we. That was sort of one that ricocheted around because Pat was heading off on vacation when that call came in, and I went there first. Well, Pat, I, I can't remember the sequence, but we've both been out there. We both know that there's a violation. Um, I think that they stabilized it. You know, I'm sure that they've got some mitigation to, to do. Um, I don't think anything was actually in the wetlands, but it was pretty close to the wetlands, certainly in the buffer. Um, and uh, it sounds like at least the, I know it's taken a while to push this along, but um, I don't know if does that sound um, reasonable that we can get yeah, that. Yeah, I think they wanted to look into a garage or something too. That might be part of the NOI. They're, they're, so they're the doing a plan for an addition and, and whatnot, and they said they might as well roll it all together, but that we want to get this thing, you know, it started in the spring, and, it, and we haven't seen any activity there, so they need to step the yard in. The may not be able to stay where they are. Right. I, th I think they got to definitely show up. Once we see the wetlands line, Mr. Arbito. My name is Paul Marabito. I'm representing the owner and applicant who seated to my uh, right, Mr. George Lavoy. And actually, I got to cut you off for one second, Paul. Gotta Sorry, got to read this. <laughs> um, on September 6, 2017, at 6 20 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 Town of Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of George and Vicki. Lavoie to raise and rebuild a dwelling on property located at 35 Brunswick Street, situate. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The applicant owns an existing a dwelling that sits on a lot of 35 <coughs> on Brunswick Street, and the lot contains 5,600 square feet of land. Um, we, we have been to the zoning board for approval to increase the gross floor area. It's currently a one-story house with a full basement. What they're proposing to do is to raise the existing dwelling, which is shown in brown here. In light brown, there's an open deck to the rear, mm -hmm. and there's an on porch in the front and one to the side. The orange line is the outline of the proposed house. These two yellow areas would be, this will be an open deck, and around the east side and the south side of the house, there'll be a uh, covered porch. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a proposed driveway to the garage, which will be um, constructed out of uh, permeable uh, pavers. The surface of this lot is all sand. There's a septic system to the rear of the property as well that will uh, remain in place. Uh, because this is on a barrier beach, the home will be built on a, a wood-driven pile foundation. Um, the top of the piles will be at least two feet above the surrounding ground to meet the DEP policy for uh, construction on a barrier beach. The uh, flood zone is elevation 13. It's an AE zone, elevation 13. And the land slopes from the street at 13 up to the back at 14. So the lot is right at the flood elevation. But the first floor of the house, because it's on piles, is going to be at elevation 18, which is well above the 13-foot elevation uh, requirement under um, the uh, feasible uh, construction standards. Um, there's no changes in the grades. There's a, a row of um, infiltrators on each side of the house for the stormwater. And, um, there's also a set of structural plans that I submitted that was prepared by uh, Rivermore. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much covers it. As far as the performance standards, this is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. So there are no performance standards under the DEP. However, as I mentioned, the top of the piles would have to be two feet above the surrounding grade, which they are. Under the local bylaw, there's a performance standard for land subsidies supposed to store flowage. And the, and the performance standards have been met, and I outlined them in my. Uh, um, there's fire room. 
The first is that the first floor of the dwelling is more than one foot above the female foot elevation of 13. It's going to be at 18. Um, the second is that the dwelling is not on a poured concrete foundation. Third, the proposed driveway surface is of a, a previous surface. The fourth, there's no mounted septic system. And lastly, the proposed work will not destroy the barrier beach. It, um, uh, this project does meet all the relevant performance standards. And the purpose of some clients is to make a more clean flat standard. So with that, I'll end the answer and question on the ground. Um, Penny? Just one question, Paul. Where is the ocean relationship over here? No. Over here. This is the locust. This is the ocean over here. Yes. So is the footprint being changed? The footprint of the house? Mm -hmm. Yes, slightly. Quite a bit. Just a heavy line on your plan is the house itself. Mm -hmm. This is the current house. It does not have a garage, but the, the new house will have a garage. It will have an open deck in the back. And this will be a, a covered porch on the right side and the front side of the house. It's like twice the size on it. Is that calculation on the plan anywhere? Ex existing um, okay. yeah, square the, footage um, and proposed? Four square feet impervious to 1988. So, it's more than that. Yeah. 650 square feet more impervious surface. Paul, what was calculated in the impervious surface before? Um, well, the, uh, the the impervious surface that that would have included the um, existing house, the sidewalk, the stairs. Um, that's pretty much it. That was, that was 1,334 square feet and the proposed impervious area is 1,988. It's an increase of 654 square feet. Thank you. That's pretty much due to the roof area that will be on the house and the, and the, um, proposed, uh, covered decks. Small ranch. Yeah. This is the house plus this is deck. Yeah, that's that's the orange line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, that, that's the orange line plus this this area here and this side of the house has a, um, a covered porch. That that's where the increase comes from. There's also a small covered porch here all over the doorway <coughs> going up to the deck. This is a roof area as well. All all the roof area will be contained and recharged back into the ground. And again, that that whole side is all sand. You probably know. Okay. Is is the covered the, uh, porch covered in the in the new square footage of the 1984? Pardon? Is it is the covered porch included in the square footage of 1984? That that house also meets all of the uh, required setbacks. We didn't need any waivers from the zoning board for that. The reason we went to the zoning board was because there was an increase of more than 20 percent in the gross floor area. Um, because this is a substandard lot. It's only 5,600 square feet. And it's only 80 feet wide instead of 100 feet. But again, there's a full basement in that house, um, which is going to be um, eliminated for obvious reasons. So they're taking that and basically making that the second floor. Now, is the, the yard where this new house is going, is it natural or is it a lawn? It's all natural, yeah. It's all natural, it's sickened and brushed. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, 
Amy, or? Well, I wanted to bring to your attention on a butter letter that we received. Well, 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 Frank reads that. I just want to um, touch him on the lawn, the yard area, the corner of the state, natural. You're not going to go inside. No, no. The sod probably wouldn't last there. Well, no. I'm just asking, no. you know. <laughs> it's just going to stay. Yeah, no. Beach. Yes. Paul, has there been Board of Health approval for septic system? That septic system was installed some time ago. It was installed and signed off. So there's no new septic? No. And, but it will accommodate the number of bedrooms? Yes, it that? will. We haven't changed the number of bedrooms. Okay. Um, so this, this letter is from um, Susan O'Brien at 31 Brunswick Street, and her concerns are for the construction process, the driving piles, and whether the vibration or the or whatever from driving the piles would um, damage her her home. Okay. Um, do you have any comments or thoughts on on this project, Amy? Well, I I think that. Um, that the project is obviously subject to protection under the different acts and the situate uh, wetlands bylaw for certain, um, which is pretty obvious. Uh, and I, I feel that the project meets the requirements of the acts. So. Um, is there anybody in the audience that would like have any questions or speak to it? Yes, ma'am. My name is Susan O'Brien. I'm the one who wrote the letter. Sure. And I'm just here, and now I was sitting back here, and I'd like to show you the property from my view, from my house, and to tell you that this house here was the one I was speaking of. Mm-hmm. And which is your home? I'm looking at. This is his no. home. I'm looking out my window. I see. And that's the house that caused the damage. I never thought it would, but. I get cracks and everything on my, because it's all um, B board upstairs. I get and you. There's no two by four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the pictures, too. This is helpful. Okay. Um, can you do me a favor? You have to take Nancy and Pat. Amy. I mean, she's. Wow. Um. Also, I'd like to note one more thing. Sure. I spoke to Mr. LeBoy. <coughs> you. Um, you know, I sent him a letter and he came over and he's, he said to me that they were looking at alternatives. Mm -hmm. and he said nothing else about it. And then I think it was like 24 hours later, I get a call from a friend of mine telling me that his house is listed on a Marshfield forum for sale for $3.99. And the next day, crazy enough, I get a call from somebody, or it might have been a couple of days, that they purchased the house at 98 Hummer Beach Road, or they put a, um, a bid in on it, and I understand that they're going forward to purchase that house. So my concern is, if they get approved here, then they're going to pass these permits on to the next buyer, who has no idea what I'm going to be going through. And that's... Okay, thank you. Um, I think we should we should talk about a couple of things or address a couple of things. I appreciate your concerns for your home, especially with with driving the piles. It's the commission looks at work in, in a resource area, protected area. This is a barrier beach. Yeah. And so one of the things that's required is that these homes be elevated. Um, if possible, um, we're looking for this sort of activity to take place, that people get their homes up and out of harm's way. Um, and actually the preferred foundation by the state is driven piles, even before um, uh, 
concrete piers. Oftentimes people do the concrete piers because they can't move their home. They have no way to go with it, so they excavate under it. But that in turn softens the ground around it and can create other problems. Um, I don't know that this has happened with driven piles before, but I know in cases where they're dealing with ledge, with blasting, with chipping and things like that, people have to use like a seismic, um, a company with seismic information to be able to, to monitor that. And I'm not sure that that's within our purview to require that. That might be something that the building department would, would have to enforce. Um, you can't bring harm or, or anything to someone else's property. I mean, we, we, we watch for that sort of thing. <coughs> One of the things we do do is look to see where the water, the runoff is going to go from this house. And in this case, they're putting it into infiltrators as opposed to letting it run out onto the ground as a way to keep water from the roof and whatnot. They're increasing the impervious area, so they have to control that. That's a piece that we have to review as a commission. Um, I, I am suggesting that not to pass the buck, but that to deal with the issue of the piles um, would be more something that the building department might be able to look I at. Have. have they given you any sort of thoughts on how that would be addressed? At the time, they didn't have the pilings or any information. They just had the what they just. Sure. Okay. So, as a commission, when we look at this sort of thing, we look at a house that's that's in this area. Any time that you can have a situation where the flow of water can move freely from the ocean towards the river or across a, a, a barrier beach, that's positive as opposed to having a, a poured concrete foundation. Um, so one of the things the commission would look at and say, well, this type of activity is a positive one. Um, however, the size of the house is pretty substantial. Um, Again, we don't have jurisdiction of the setback requirements that the town has. It sounds like they've been before the, the zoning board. So the zoning board's saying we don't have an issue with that size. Um, the commission would look at it and say, well, there's some disturbance going on here. Um, right now, it looks like there's maybe some dune grass and, and some other vegetation um, that are around this house, and that's going to get disturbed when they tear down the house. and and put up a new house. So we would look at that and say, well, how are you going to mitigate for that? How, how do you best deal with that um, in terms of uh, whether there's additional plantings, whether there's some protection, those sort of things that go on. But it's not answering your question about the vibration from the piles. And, and again, I really think we can look at that, but I think that's a, a discretion of the building department to see how they would how they would protect that. Um, because technically, this is the type of foundation that we promote in these locations. Um, so. The house across the street from me last year was built on the cement pilings, and the house directly next to that was built on cement pillars or whatever. Right. Um, with no problem. There's a lot of older houses there. I'm not the only one that's probably. Sure. To. Um, when they were building the one on the seawall, I never in a million years thought that I was going to be in any trip to that. Mm -hmm. But my upstairs door frame, because it's, you know, so sure. it, it cracked. Okay. In my basement, I went downstairs, and the stairs had moved down a little. You could see where the paint was. And the beam is not a solid beam. It's sisted on one side. You know, so. Okay. Um. Well, I, we'll take that into consideration, but um, so I, I guess from my standpoint, it, it's a conditionable project, but there is a much larger area that's, that's being covered by this house. And in looking at these photographs, I'm seeing a, gra a sandy area with grass and, and whatnot, and just wondering how do we, um, how do we mitigate that? Right. Thank you. They could add some um, uh, plantings along the left and right side, um, also behind the open deck in the back. 
the, the use in the backyard would be pretty much confined to that open deck. And to the left of it, as you look at it, there's plenty of room to put some seagrass in there. You could probably put that over the leaching area as well. And maybe some plantings along the perimeter, you know, small shrubs or something. And there'd be room on the right side as well. Um, I think those two types of plants that grow best in this environment. And you could condition it with a, a planting plant to show the areas we plant. Anybody else in the audience? Do you think we need um, any thoughts as to whether we want any additional information on that or we, whether we want some sort of planting plan before we close this so whether we can condition we can make that a request for part of the, part of the I think you could condition it uh, uh, with planting plan to be received prior to issuance okay if if that's something that you think you can get together before sure. the next meeting which would be September 25th yesterday, sure, yeah. okay um, I'm just not sure what else we can offer in terms of the concern for for the construction um, during that process. I mean, we you've got um, erosion control around the property, right? Yes, that's mm -hmm. that heavy uh, line around the three sides. So in terms of containing your your work, it's all within sight. Yes. Yeah. Um, Paul, I, 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 I know you've dealt with more projects. In terms of ledge or in terms of places where there's um, um, the concern for for this sort of activity, what what other things could be offered to control? I wouldn't it? expect to find ledge. The reason being, this is a barrier. No, no, I'm not. Off, I'm not saying ledge. I'm more concerned with the the vibration or, or the blows from the hammer and affecting these homes, especially where they're so close. What I, what I can tell you is on some projects where we would have ledge where it's being blasted, uh, people can do a pre-construction survey of the houses around it where they go in and they take videos or pictures of the walls and the houses, and they, they do it before and they do it after. And the contractors are usually insured for that. Um, that's something that the building inspector could probably require. Right. You know, at, at the time, whoever builds this, um, files through the building permit. And you you can always send a letter to them to that effect as part of this. See that happen. So it's on file with our office. Can we, um, can we just express these concerns? You've spoken with the building department, but we can certainly send a letter to the building department as well um, expressing those concerns. Yes. All right? Good. All right. <coughs> I have to take a motion. I need a motion to close. Second. Um, subject to a planting plan. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, motion, the second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Yep. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Foley, uh, 212 Central Ave, septic repair. On September 6, 2017, at 6.30 p.m., the Town Hall uh, Situate Conservation Commission will hold it. Is anybody here for Foley? Okay. Hold the wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Richard Foley to repair a septic system on property located at 212 Central Ave, Hummerock. A butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Good evening. All 
Fire away. Uh, my name is Robert Crawford. I'm a reg registered professional engineer in Massachusetts. Uh, this is Mr. Foley. Um, he's representing uh, Mr. Casey, the owner of the property. Uh, basically, the lot is uh, about 50 feet wide on the easterly side of Central Avenue. It's encumbered by the town water main, which runs through it about eight feet off of the street line. And it doesn't leave much room to um, put in a system that conforms to all of the Title V regulations. Uh, we met previously this evening with uh, the Board of Health, and they granted the variances that we sought. Basically, there were four setback variances to the property line and uh, the house and uh, another variance that allows the uh, use of a thousand gallon septic tank in, in, in place of the uh, normal 1500 gallon tank. There are three bedrooms in the house and which results in 660 gallons of effluent per day and a thousand gallons is certainly almost double what the uh, minimum required based on the design flow would be. Uh, we're proposing to replace the existing cesspool with uh, 144 linear feet of our 24 chambers. They're a plastic chamber, uh, approximately a foot high. And um, <coughs> the, uh, we propose to replace the at least 24 inches of the cobblestones that basically what's on the beach. Uh, in that area with uh, a sand filter underneath the chambers. The, pro the uh, house, the system and the, and the repair are on land subject to coastal storm flowage, barrier beach, and a coastal dune. Uh, there's really no alternative except to do what we have here. So the, the uh, property is also within the riparian zone to the South River. Try to answer any questions you have. Okay. Did you say you have water health? Yes. Yes. What number you at? 42. 42. So he'd be back here. Okay. But he's on the other side? He's on the beach side. You're on the beach side or the river side? He's on the beach side. side. Okay. Okay. And just a just a comment. I maintain the property for Phil Casey. And this spring, when I was opening opening it up, I noticed a little sinkhole next to the to the septic, and thought maybe it was just next to it and might fill it. But when I opened it up and looked, that will breach in it. So he opted to do the right thing and look at uh, replacing the system. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I don't have much for you on this one. I think it would be a great improvement. I mean, it's definitely subject to protection. Um, it would be a big improvement, so. Okay. Anybody in the audience? Okay. Well, it is, Steph, thank you for moving forward on that, because all of these are certainly beneficial to the river and to the, <coughs> to the ocean. Absolutely. <laughs> I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Toll Brothers, uh, Hadley Road, we have requests for continuance. I probably should have said that in the beginning. Toll Brothers won't be heard this evening. So we have a request to continue Toll Brothers until September 25th. They, they want to be the 25th? Okay. Yes, that's what this says. Yes. Okay, my, uh, okay, I make a motion that we continue Toll Brothers Hadley Road to September 25th at 6.30. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Town of Situate DPW 26 and 32 Gardner Road, drainage easement. They've requested a continuance. They don't have a time on that. Did anybody talk to DPW about how far out we should push that? I, I just push it to 
Uh, the 25th, okay. 6.35. Motion we continue in Sunset Road, DPW, Sunset Road to Sunset Road to 6 35. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then uh, Sunset Road, there's also a request for a continuance. Uh, did they give any date? Uh, they asked for a month. A they month? asked for a okay. month, so what's the first one in October? Right. Wait a second. October 11th. I make a motion we continue 23 sunset to how early are we starting these? 6.15 on October 11th. Lisa, would you like to second that? Oh, second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're at uh, Torneta to Atlantic Ave, relocate a snow fence. On September 6, uh, 2017, at 6.40 p.m., the Town Hall Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 Town Situate Code of Bylaws mm -hmm. to amend an order conditions issued under DEP file number 68-2585 regarding the <coughs> application of Paul Turnetta to relocate a snow fence on property located at 2 Atlantic Drive, Humrock. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, I'm Attorney Steve Gard. With me is Don Monroe from Coastal Engineering. Mr. Chairman, I would like to suggest... I'm sorry, your name again? Uh, Don. Oh, Don. 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 Monroe. Um, Monroe. Got it. There is a um, uh, sort of a sister application, which is, I think, your next one for Keith Dolby. It's the two... Uh, Two properties abut each other, and the fence kind of runs over both of them. So, if you would, it, it, maybe you would, you would like to open that hearing as well and combine them, or we can take them one at a time. The this two um, diff two different sections of the fence. That's sure. all it is. Yeah. And basically, they're looking for the same action. It's one plan. Shows the fence. Correct. Yeah. Yes. I don't have a problem with that. <coughs> yeah. I think that that would be fine. Sure. Anybody have any thoughts? I think it's a good so, idea. Um, it's one side, one side. Yep, it's like oh, this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, one second. The north and south, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, Pat, you, uh, I just, I know that in the past when something's been appealed, um, if, you were, if you have both of them combined and there's an appeal on the line, I don't know if it makes any difference. I don't know if legal counsel would. Well, I, I'm not suggesting that the two applications merge. I'm just saying for the purpose of the public hearing, we could address them both together. Sure. They would have to issue two orders of conditions right. that would each be appealable um, uh, individually, of course. So there were separate amended order of conditions <coughs> requests for each separate property. Right. Okay. Got it. So you raised a point. You raise your hand. And your name is? Richard Wood. I'm on 44 Central Ave. Okay. People on Central Ave have only two accesses to the beach, the public beach, mm -hmm. on both ends of the street. But well, right now what we're discussing is whether we hold both these hearings simultaneously. <coughs> oh, fine. Okay. And then we'll get to the, we'll get to the, thank you. All right, so on September 6, 2017 <coughs> at 6.45 p.m. the town hall, the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700. Town of Citra Code of Bylaws to amend the order conditions issued under DEP file number 682587 um, regarding the application of Keith and Rosemary Doby to relocate a snow fence on property located at 128 Central <coughs> at Hamaraka. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Okay, thank you. So for the record, I'm Attorney Steve Gard on that application as well. With me is Don Monroe on that application from Coastal Engineering. In the audience is Mr. Doby. Unfortunately, tonight, Mr. Tanetta could not, Dr. Tanetta could not be with us. Um, uh, however, it, the, the overall uh, project is simply a, a snow fence on Barrett Avenue. That is the intent of that fence is to direct pedestrian traffic over the newly replenished dunes that were built by Mr. Tanetta and Mr. Doby. 
with that, I'll turn it over to Don to just give you a quick overview on the plan. Um, sure. With that having been said, I will point out that the plan before you this evening has already been adjusted based on the comments that we have um, considered from the one of the neighbors, and we're going to, and I'll ask Don to show you on the plan what differences there are. So we expect tonight to request a continuance after getting the commission's comments on the plan and then and then eventually giving you a final plan, hopefully without any butter a butter concern. Okay. I know there's a lot of folks in the room that are interested in this. Can everybody <coughs> see what what uh, um, is going on? Does anybody want to move around? Um, yeah, we gotta see too. I'm I'm good with it. Lisa, are you okay? You see enough to Yeah. Gonna all push down. You don't get too close. <laughs> I think we like each other. Yeah. It's all right. Go ahead. So, uh, the, obviously, the um, resource area is a concern of Coastal Beach, Barrier Beach, and Coastal Dune. The Coastal Dune that was reconstructed is in this area here. The sand drift fence that was installed in front of the Tornado Turner property is buried under that particular dune, and that's been planted with beach grass on both sides. The area that we're looking at uh, and that was raised, by, uh, a question was raised and an issue raised by one of the neighbors is this particular snow fence that's in here, this location on Barrett Street. <coughs> the photograph that we have here on the plan, this wing here and this wing here are shown to be existing and they're there now. The lighter colored line that goes along here to the south and the darker line to the north those two fences exist now. <clears throat> the reason those were put in was like Attorney Guard said, was to direct traffic down and through over the dune so that this portion of dune could stay at an elevation to protect flooding from happening up Barrett Street. What we proposed on this amended order plan for both Mr. Doby and Mr. Tornetta was to remove this wing, which is this here, and remove approximately five sections of the fence to the south that goes down along Dolby's property, and then add this S, uh, two S fences down through the dune to make sure that the foot traffic stays in one location. So we're proposing this, proposing to move that, proposing to keep this northern fence and keep this fence. That's what's on the plan currently, and that's what we're proposing. We've had a discussion with one of the neighbors prior to, prior to the meeting here, and what that neighbor asked for was that we remove this section of fence as well down to the dark portion. So I'm gonna kind of bring that over to you folks so you can yeah. see it a little better. Mm -hmm. So what, what we would like to, to be able to do to appease the neighbor, we'll, we'll remove this, remove that, and remove it all the way down to here. They've allowed us to keep this section and this section. So it'll be open the full it'll be width. Be wider, full width. It'll be you'll you'll be yeah. open from well actually, in addition to that, they asked us if we could put this particular fence on the north right on Mr. Tonetta or just off towards Tonetta's property along the property line, which we agreed to. So actually in effect this section in the front will be from the property line to property line open. The only place it changes is right over the dune, which the neighbor so graciously showed us photographs. There was a fence in those locations way back in, I don't know what date it was, the 70s or 80s maybe? No, it, it goes back to when, when Tornado's host. Oh, it was 1999. 1999. That, yes. So right. we've got somewhat of an agreement on that, but I think we still want discussion and we still want you to have your input as well. Yes, we can. I, I want to make a couple of points as someone who happens to be on the commission but also lives in Hamrock and is, is very familiar with the area. <coughs> There's never been an issue that I know of saying that people, the access to the beach was going to be denied in any way along that street. The issue that I saw was that the fence was not originally permitted, not part of the original proposal, and the question came up as to whether or not it was on private property. And um, uh, so that is how we got to this point. And what I'm seeing on this now is basically putting it back the way 
um, it was in previous years and uh, Mr. Stanton is exactly correct there certainly was a fence there um, before the turned out has built that house so there's been no intention by either folk, either of my clients to prevent any access to the to on Barrett Street to the beach I realize the that. intention is simply to take some direction from the Commission in protecting the resource area and the expensive dunes that just replenished from keeping people right. to walk on them it's really just a guide it's not I mean people can walk around the fence and go over the dune it's not a, a block a chain link fence you can walk around it it's really just to encourage people to not um, the foot traffic not to deteriorate the dune as we know it, it it's harmful for people to walk on these dunes well again as a commission the big issue was that it wasn't part of the original proposal of course and it wasn't of permitted. course yes. of course and we recognize so that's what that. we're trying to straighten out we recognize that and mm -hmm. correct yes I'm good of course <clears throat> Should we hear from Mr. Doby on this proposal? Uh, Mr. Doby's fine. Well, I'm, not, no, I'm not necessarily fine. You want to talk? Uh, I thought well, you we, did. We'll get to that. Let's, why oh, don't we finish okay, up with members? Let, yeah, but let's yeah. finish with yeah. members yeah. and then uh, maybe Pat and Amy and then we'll, we'll move to the audience, all right? I'm fine. I <clears> just wanted people to be able to get to the beach comfortably. No issue. Yep. Comfortably. Sure. That's all. Walking to the beach, not driving. Yeah. The beach. No, no, no. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I don't know. Lisa? That's you. You're Lisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. Penny's ready to move this along, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my, co my question is I'll just point to it because I think it'll be easier. I put my shoes on. All right. So my understanding is there's now just one side of the, the fence. No. No. There's a picture there's, right here. Sure. This is what's out there now. There's yes. two sides. I live on Mount Rock as well. Okay. So there are two sides currently. That's mm -hmm. why we showed the photograph so you know that what's there right. is what we're showing. Yes. And what we're showing here is existing. Right. And what we're proposing now is this fence, which is this one, mm -hmm. to go right on the property line, and then this portion, which is this, to be removed to there, and then this, which was existing according to one of the neighbors way back in the late 90s, <coughs> so that they are directed down this area, down over the dune. Okay. And what will the width of this be? Currently, it's proposed to be four feet. The note on the plan says 44 to 48, but we will, you know, obviously we're going to need a continuance to revise the plan. The plan will say four feet. That's good. The handicap is that 48. Yeah. In the exam, too. Yeah. Amy, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are that uh, the project uh, further is the protection of the dune area, so I think it meets the requirements of the Wetlands Protection Act and situate bylaw, and an order would be appropriate. To amend those orders? Amend the orders, yes. Okay. And with the width of, everybody's comfortable with the width in terms of <coughs> use and traffic and, and all that? So, uh, Don, explain why the, the S curve is the way it is, yeah. and then the width is oh, a little okay. bit limited. That's yeah. a, that's by design for right. the the dune to allow yeah. have some yeah. breakthrough, but not all of it. I'm sorry. The, the topography <coughs> lends to making an S so that the pedestrian, when they're walking, it's gradual, because we kind of tapered that dune back into towards um, the dune that we created for a Keith. So that topography lends to a curved shape rather than going straight down. If we went straight down, we'd be going at such an angle that it would just cause yeah, erosion. Like, okay. yeah. But what is the width of that? It's still 48. This is all four feet wide, yeah. that section. And, and that, that keeps people, you know, this is, this is actually the dune that was created. So we're trying to keep people focused in one area so that if there has to be any replenishment, it's in one location. It's not over the whole dune. So, my understanding would be that the fence is going to be moved closer to the Mr. Doby's property on the north side, and it's going to run. So the, actually, the, that's on no, the south to, side. On the south side, right? And it's going to run the length of that property or not? 
Yes, uh, the, the fence. Yes, on the north side property line on Mr. Tanetta's property, the fence oh, will be the, the fence will be relocated to his property. You can see it, it's very light, yep, but you yep, can yep. see posts there. Yeah, got it. That's where we're going to put it. Basically, right where it was. The fence. All right. And then this, the fence on Mr. Dobie's side, the small gray section, will be eliminated until you get to that black hard line, and then it'll do the S going over the dune. Okay. So the, be the, the purpose of this fence is, is more not so much for, like, um, wind and, and the dune no, no. movement as yeah. it is trying to avoid um, a rope traffic and yeah. um, damage to the dune. So yeah. and the fence is easily removable for the winter months when uh, a person, if they had to do work on their home down the beach, they could still get access over Barrett Street with a limited work permit from your commission to go in and do whatever they need to do. So it still would allow a permitted, you know, machine to go down onto the beach. It's not a like a permanent piling driven fence. It's more of a flimsy sort of snow fence. If it, a, a machine can get through a four foot no. opening? No, <laughs> no. He's saying, it, he's saying it's going to get removed. They could easily remove it. These right. Are, these to are gain access through foot machines. Typically most contractors on the Cape are used to where they know that they have a pedestrian style fence that can be easily removed, rolled up, they do their work, then they put it back in place. Right, right. All right. So, anybody in the audience to speak to this, Mr. Dobie? Well, I, I, I do not agree with taking that extra sense, of sense out on my side. I don't think it probably protects the beach grass or the dune on my side. On my side, it protects all the tornadoes, but it <coughs> throws me under the bus. Um, well, you're one of the applicants. No, 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 that's yeah, so the, the no, but you're, there's two applications here. One's yours, so well, one is one is yeah. Yes, yeah, so, oh, okay. so well, I think what Mr. Dobie's talking about. You notice that these two fence lines. Yes. They're on the north side of the center line of the road, so both oh, fences are on Mr. Tornetta's. I, I got think it. He's worried that. Eliminating this fence, which is on Keith's side of the center line, would promote people to walk up. And in the photograph, you can see walk up in this area here. Right. <coughs> and I thought I gave up a lot when I gave up that whole section down to from the road to where I gave it up. And now they want me to give up another. So why isn't the fence just being moved over and with and being left on 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 some of that south side? Um, th this this section here. Yes. Uh, primarily because the neighbor that has an issue with what's there now is saying that it's not what was there before and he wants, would like, and it, it expressed the desire to have what was there before. Right. There's no issue at all with taking this particular fence and putting it on Keith's <coughs> property line. We could do that. But that would be up on the dune. That would be That's up in this location yes. here. Right. So all you, in my opinion, as an engineer, a coastal engineer, that would only promote people to walk on this. If we eliminate it, we're promoting people to walk on it. So we're stuck with a situation where this side of the fence, because it wasn't there before, is now being contested by the neighbor because it wasn't there before. So the fact that we have a, we have a continuation we could go into more discussion with Keith about this side and change that amended order if he wants something more than what's being proposed on Mr. Tornetta's side. But we want to eliminate the, this side that's on Tornetta's property because that's what was requested. I got you. So we could come back when we, fought, when we come back for the um, continuation there may be a plan that we prepare for Keith that shows a fence, you know, because he can. He can, he can, he can actually put a fence on his property line like uh, Mr. Tanetta. So, you know, I want to leave that open. I don't want to leave that closed because this particular fence really doesn't have anything to do with Mr. Doby. Because it's on the center line of the road that's on Tornetta's property. You understand that that leaves a 20-foot access right through the building? I, I'm looking at that, and if the purpose is to protect the dune, um, I'm not quite sure that it uh, gets us to yeah, where we want to be. Let him talk. We have the center line of that street. It seems like we should have some rights here, too, besides the neighbors. Uh, 
maybe backing up a little bit more, this, we're looking to amend a set of orders. Mm -hmm. The orders that we're amending, did they address this fence? No. Uh, well, I wasn't part of it, but I don't think that they no. did, right? No, it did not yeah, because the neighbor's concern wasn't raised until half an hour ago, or, or not, uh, not no. raised, but wasn't really talked about until half an hour ago. It does allow us, I, I shouldn't be. No, I don't really, I, the, the neighbors have um, indicated some concerns. The fence was not part of the original NOI. It was put in, it was put yeah. in as an afterthought by the engineers with all good intention and the clients with all good intention to protect the dune. That, that's really what it was. I, I can't okay. speak for what happened back then. Mm -hmm. it, it was just a good idea and it was there before historically in 1999. The, Mr. Tanetta and Mr. Dobie knew that, you know, and there was a fence along Mr. Tanetta's property line historically as well. So the neighbors asked for us to restore it to the original condition and we, you know, pretty much have that what what it is we thought we had done, but Mr. Dobie is indicating a it, it as far as Mr. Tanetta's application, Mr. Dobie's against us removing that fence to placate the neighbor. So we have a little bit of a competing interest there. Maybe the commission could weigh in on what they would like to see. I think that might be helpful to us and possibly to the neighbor, Mr. Stanton as well, but nonetheless. I would, propose, I would propose to ask for the commission's feedback, I think. Sure. Um, well, we're <coughs> Can I put on just one more thing? If you look at the FEMA's guidelines for access to the beach over a dune, it refers to the Florida, guide, the Florida regulations and the New Jersey regulations, which say it should not be wider than four feet for a single family dwelling. It should not be wider than six feet for a community access. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brodsky. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky, and I represent John Stanton, who lives at 130 Central Avenue. And it was, uh, we're very, very grateful to, to both Steve and Don and Mr. Dobie for uh, proposing to modify the plan that's presented. I just want to make it clear that Mr. Stanton supports this modification because it balances public access and personal privacy rights uh, with your wetland interests. Uh, my understanding is that this needs to be reviewed by Dr. Tanetta and uh, ultimately approved, and we support a continuance uh, for the plan to be updated. If for some reason this, this compromise... <laughs> Set your code of bylaws. <laughs> section... <laughs> and the section 3070, Tana, set your code of bylaws. Began the application to sue the pizza. <laughs> What? Yeah, I, I had it in my thing on. I just told Carol that it said Tuesday on your website. October 11th is Tuesday? No. 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 It's Tuesday, October 10th. It's on your website. And it's oh. the 10th. Right. Yeah, the 10th. But now we've continued two hearings no. to the 11th. Yeah. We've got to go over the 11th. I just called them out in the hallway. Right, because we can. The same I, got, I got a sheet here. <laughs> well, that's probably a previous. Well, no, there was just one Tuesday that we, because it, it's Mondays after tonight, and except for that one, what was the other one, one that night, which is Tuesday, because Monday that was the first day. Columbus, 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 Columbus. Can you send out the, 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 the dates again to us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Okay, yes. so the website says Tuesday, yes. but we're, we, we just committed well, these you, you to Wednesday. You don't have the latest and greatest then, because I resent them. Well, Frank has, actually. I'm going to kick him to the curb. Yeah, whatever. Right, and so, Sorry, Frank. so I think we can stick with Tuesday. Do the folks that just left know that? No. Yes. I yes, you just told them. That it's actually Tuesday, and yeah, then the I'm only sorry. other one is a continuance for one month, which was sunset. When is, and there was nobody uh, and here we for that. can, right? So we can clear that up and just so weigh it out. So sunset. Move it all to the tenth. So I want a motion 10 -10. to continue. Uh, you can do sunset road, Richard. Well, don't we is six fifteen available on the tenth for sunset? Yes, because okay. Yeah. That's the first one. Okay. 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 So, so I'm going to send the motion to continue sunset on October 11th. You. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to make a motion well, to. Oh, I'll second it. I thought it was yeah. be the 10th. 
And let's take a vote. We, we, I am rescinding. Oh. Okay. Yes, I vote. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. <laughs> I make a motion to. I can't vote on this one. I know. So. I know. I just don't know. Okay. Um, I make a motion to continue Norton 23 Sunset to 6.15 on October 10th. Lisa? I second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay. okay, now. now Sharp as a tip. And do I have to do the same for Tornetta? I do it for Hill? both of them. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion to rescind Tornetta and Dobie continuing to October 11th. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. I make a motion to continue Tornetta and Dobie to 6.30 on October Okay. Second. Right Tuesday on that. Yes. Tuesday. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is the 11th. It just said the 11th. That's it. Doesn't say the day. Okay. This is your fault, Carl. No, of course. Woo. Paul's not here anyway. So fine. I think he told us before he couldn't make the first. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. All right. Here, you can fold that up with that. So now yes. we just yeah. opened the pizza. Well, oh. to pizza. Yes. well no, no, so motion. we re received a continuance for the pizza. Oh, good. Okay. To so October 10th? Well, I got to open No, the 11th. <laughs> I'm going to open it. Do we have the. <laughs> Yeah, now, September, I, I don't even know if I read this thing right or not. September 6, 2017 at 6.55 p.m. The Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing in the Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of pseudopezia to raise and rebuild a dwelling on property located at 537 Hadley Road, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. And we've got a request to continue this to when? I make a motion to continue to PISA 537 at Avenue Road to September 25th at 645. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. On September 6, 2017, at 7.05 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws, began the application of David and Elaine Cole to build a two-story addition on property located at 31 Kingsway, Situate, and others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. I got three, that's all. Do you want those? Mm -hmm. I've got the stamp receipts from the um, post office to show that we sent them. I'm in the middle of the town by the highway bar. To show that we actually sent them out. Between oh, no, the highway bar and one at the okay. school, there's a subdivision. <laughs> Do you have a copy of this plan, or would you like me to put it on the... Um, I have a copy. Okay. I'll share it. I have extra copies for you. I think it's She's going to share it. will probably be well, all right. You can, because I know it's there. There's no way I didn't know that. It does. Yeah. Um, go ahead. And Hi. your names? Uh, Elaine Cole. And David Cole. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so we are looking to um, ex extend our garage to make it a, just an oversized second garage and put a master bedroom suite above it. Basically, that's it. Very simple. And, and the, um, we're going to be um, attaching to the existing garage mm -hmm. and coming towards the street. I see it. Okay. okay. Penny? No, I don't have any problem. Richard? No, it's good. Lisa? It looks fine. Um, Amy? No. Or Kat? I don't know which one of you guys started with this one. Or? <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Right, right. So, um, you know, I mean, this definitely is a property that's within our jurisdiction. It's the entire property is in Riverfront area with unnamed tributary of Situa Brook. It's a perennial stream. Um, the property was constructed 68. in 68, yeah. so it predates the regulations. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, it's, it's pretty obvious that the area that they're proposing is as far away from the right. river as you can get, and that there would not appear to be adverse impacts to the resource area. So I would say that um, meets the requirements for an order of conditions. The only, the, the only thing that I'm looking at, and just it is in this riverfront area, and we do try to protect the, that area as best we can. Um, and most of this is developed, and I know a lot of the houses built in that area. In fact, some of the road where the roads are in that subdivision where you are never got built on because there was actually a lot of wetlands. Yeah, that's in, in immediately behind, behind us, in fact. Right, right. Yes. So I'm just wondering, um, you've got a nice row of, of plantings and whatnot along the back of the property. If that, what we look for when things get built in, in an area like this, that, that we try to protect what we can. Sure. And um, just wondering if it would be f feasible to continue that planting in back of the sheds um, across the back as a way sure. to protect, um, further protect anything towards going towards that brook or, sure. or stream. Yeah. I think if that was a little bit of mitigation that could be added to this, it would it would go a long way to approving. Sure. This I mean, we don't have a problem. That ne that area needs to. It's the last little area that needs to be sorted in our yard. So, so no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm give you more work to do. But yeah. no. <laughs> 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 it would just. Um, yeah, we don't have a problem. It's got to be consistent yeah. with the other things that we ask folks to do. Yes. Um, so, if if you think that could work. Absolutely, uh, yeah. no problem at all. I think that would be a, a good compromise. Uh, what do you need us to do? Do we, do we just need to have the plan revised to show a, a l additional shrubs, or what, what? I think just a, a simple sketch or something, okay. just showing a continuation of those okay. plants on that It'll side be would in be. Your orders. Okay, fine. Okay. 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 Wonderful. I don't think there's no need for any erosion control here, Amy. I mean, the pool's no. right behind the right. site, so there's no no need to do anything that would keep things from going off. That way, and I think that would work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, so I have a motion. I make the motion to close. Does that mean that they don't have to come back on the tenth? <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they I know it's been great. <laughs> try to keep it amusing. <laughs> well, after the last one, it was At least quite hard. Wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Good you. luck with your project. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Um, what are you folks here for? Here. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> no, no, what, we here? If, oh, we can, on your agenda? if we can spring you, what's your? 77 Rebecca. Yeah. They're, you're next up. Yeah. Request yeah. for yeah. amendment. Okay. Oh, okay. They've been in before. Oh, I'm sorry. I got it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really you. you 77 again. Rebecca Road. Raise and rebuild instead of elevate and right. renovate. Okay. That's basically right. the sure. size of it. Sorry. No, no, no worries. So we um, we were here before. We have an order of conditions um, to um, to renovate, and we were going to put in the cement um, pilings. But after talking to builders, what we um, have been persuaded is it makes more sense to raise and rebuild, okay. which would mean we would be putting in the wood. Pilings. We're actually going to be raising the house another two feet from where we were. Sure. And we're just here to um, see if this can be done under the current order of conditions. Mm. Don't we need a set of plans? Yeah, we would need a set of plans, wouldn't we? With the pilings. Yeah. Right. So this is this is not the public hearing. This is just a request to oh, amend. Okay. 
to see so they have an existing OOC yeah. and this is the formal request and so the the avenues would be either accept their request to amend which triggers a public hearing or require a new notice of intent but so both both will result in a new public hearing new yes, set yeah. of drawings <coughs> okay so uh, uh, okay. <coughs> it's you know, I think. When did we um, when did we issue those orders? June, yeah. uh, Two months July, July sixth this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I personally think that um, there'd be no issue with amending those orders for that sort of thing. Hi, my name is Charlie Ruddy. Um, I just had a I I didn't think that was our request, <laughs> but maybe it is. Um, I, so with what we've learned about the project, right, which is you know take it down, put it back up use wooden pilings instead of, you know, poured concrete piers, um, was whether or not that change requires an amendment or whether it's within the scope of the order of conditions, it requires an amendment? Okay, so yeah. it requires it, an amendment. Yeah, no, it, it okay. does. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. That's what you got yeah. your letter that, in so that you could come tonight to talk about the request. And if okay. they are not in agreement with the request to amend the existing order, then you would know you'd need to go right to a notice okay. of intent. Okay. So whichever, yeah. All we want to do is use the wooden pilings. We're not not changing the footprint, um, but we, you know whatever our next step is. So we'll you would need new, a new set of drawings for the pilings, and okay. we would need. So the when specs you on that. when you applied to this, it was advertised. You, you're about you know about as new about this project. If they had any issues or thoughts, they could attend. Right. They, if anybody did that, which I don't recall, they didn't. yeah, they didn't. Um, then they would be anticipating some a particular thing to happen. Now something else is going to happen. So, in this case, with an amended one, do they? Uh, now, if you make a vote to accept their request, yep, then you advertise it gets advertised in the paper in the public hearing. You don't have to send out all the cards. It's just one ad in the... Yes, they do. No, they do. Uh, oh, they yeah, do. Yeah, oh. total notification, oh. right. and then the public hearing can be September 25th. So in just Wonderful. a few okay. short weeks. But we would want to have some sort of plan as to those changes. You know, something yeah. simple. I don't know if you plan on changing the footprint to the no. house. It's not no, changing. we have all the plans now too. We okay, have, from Rivermore. Yeah, Rivermore has given us the, the the whole plan. Okay, uh, for everything. There will be. Um, uh, I think we'll have to go to zoning, um, or or they'll have to make the same decision because our decision to go to go up another two feet. Right. Instead of eighteen feet, we're going to twenty. Yeah. Um, yeah. That will probably be a change. We, we had seven feet to deal with. We had, in other words, we were seven feet under. The maximum building height or whatever and we're going to use up two or three feet of that okay. so we'll have another step with with building um and uh, there, there aren't any other changes to it but we have we, we have all the paperwork that we can submit on time give you plenty of advance notice sure and uh opportunity to review all the documents that are finalized yeah, yeah makes sense okay. what uh what do we have for the first one on the 25th do you have to go before zoning I was asking, uh, I think we probably need to do the same thing with the building department, which was just to ask if, we, if it's sure. necessary. Uh, I, I thought that the order of condition said as long as you build within what the rules are, then you're okay. But we, had, we double checked on this and we're gonna double check with them. Okay, well, I'd, I'd go on for that, but let's try to put them in at 620. That'd be awesome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Since you had We've to sit here all those other guys once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. I understand what you're saying, Carol. So I think what you should do is check with um, the building department yeah. real quickly. Um, we're technically this is going to get advertised, so I mean they would still have the option to change the date if they wanted to, right? I mean to well, get, the advertisement should get in tomorrow. 25th that's right. two and well, a half weeks for our deadline for the 25th is Monday the 18th okay. okay and what do we have to have by Monday then we'll have it tomorrow. so we need your plans yes yeah and we need to advertise it in okay the paper. okay so we can yeah. bring those tomorrow. okay and then notification to a butters is a minimum of five days before the hearing okay okay 
So and it would the same process. Same process. Get so we have to file a new notice of intent or no. not? No. 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 Okay. Great. That's Thank the you. piece that no. we're not doing. Again. So you don't have right. to do all of that. It's just the amendment, but the, the neighbors have to be notified. But there is a fee for the amendment. How much is that? Whatever. Right. So <laughs> <we don't care>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All the documents that will be incorporated in into the amended order, so which are basically just our site plans. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need. Okay. Okay. And, so and we have the, those already. We just got right? them at five o'clock this afternoon. That's the structural engineering yeah. plan, right? That's okay, the plan yeah, you yeah. need. Yeah. Well, from the site Rivermore. plan. We have an amended drawing as well, but the amended drawing is doesn't build yes. you know. It doesn't show the I mean it just shows no, this this right here. Yeah, is the, the river this the is the river whole thing. thing. Yeah, the river yeah. thing. It's okay. Okay. just give us what you have. Okay. Okay. Okay, but I have to make a motion, motion that we accept, accept the amendment. Accept the request, request for amendment. Request. Request. Yep. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, thanks. See you on the 25th. Yeah. Okay. At 620, right? Six, or the 11th yes. or the 12th. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, request for an extension 98-200-202-204-206 Central Ave. Reventment repair. I make a motion that we accept that extension. Is that okay? Well, just a real... It's reventment. A, just right, a brief synopsis of that one okay. is that revetment or rip rep? Revetment is a rip rep. Essentially it, the same it, thing. It's revetment, and, and it's already been built, yes. actually. Yeah. And um, it was an order that you issued in March of 11, and the work was completed in 13, and um, the order extended under the Permit Extension Act. Yeah. So the official um, date, expiration date is, is coming up. So that's why they're requesting, it's, it's actually, it's, it's the applicant is the general contractor, not the property owners, because there are five separate addresses on Central Lab that has that have this continuous um, revetment. But anyway, so, um, Actually, we were talking about this before the meeting and thought that it might be appropriate to extend the orders because if you, if you don't extend, then they're going to come to you, but suggest to them that they file an amendment or a request to amend um, the description because since it's already built... Why do they need the extension if it's already they, built? Because they want to continue to what, maintain it. Yeah, what, maintenance. Okay. Yeah. What they should have done when they filed their yeah. orders is they should have made maintenance part of those right. orders. Yeah. Right. So by filing for this mm -hmm. amendment, okay. um, we'll give them the extension for right now, but we want them to just, if they amend the orders, then... Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Could, could well, we do we it for a year and tell them that we won't do it again? They need to make a request for an amendment? Yes. Okay. Do a one-year extension right. and let them know that we want them to amend it to modify the yeah. description of the project to, for maintenance. Okay. And that way yeah. it triggers a public hearing so yeah. that when people see that they're out there working, out there working it, it covers us all. Yep. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Oh, watch out. Did that get left up here? You just found it now? That's why the, yeah. the phone's here for help. Just I didn't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I make a motion that we ex give an extension for the revetment repair on 198-200. Yes. Um, <laughs> coastal advisory, we hasn't been haven't really met, but we did have a, a meeting there was a meeting in, at South Hammer Rock Beach Association to do with the dunes and the easement things, and it was pretty constructive uh, I couldn't be there. I meeting. Um, I think people are starting to see the benefits of having that dune and are, are coming around to the fact that they'll, they'll have to give up some um, certain things, but that, that is hopefully moving forward. Um, slow process, but I think the wrinkles are getting worked out. And, See what happens. Jason Butner told me today. I thought it was more constructive than yes. earlier meetings. Yes, it was, but 
the, the biggest challenge, and each time people walk away, is you have to answer people's questions. Because when they walk away and they don't have the questions answered, they like, they, like yeah, they shut just down. come back with more questions. Well, you know, it's a question and answer game, it's a process. Um, well, at any rate, I thought it yeah, was possible. Brad will be helpful with all the coastal stuff, too. Yeah, with you know, well, CZM. CZM, I mean, he knows come on. all right. the players. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, to find him with it, the, his background. That was a stoke of life. Yeah, you know, it he, was. He lived in Norwell and, and really, yeah. it's a good time. There's, there's, a tr there's a trend here, this Norwell. Yeah. Yeah. What was some, <laughs> <laughs> what's the discussion at 38 Central Ave? That's, uh, I no, no, that was supposed to be Atlantic. That was that was Cote. That was Cote. That was Cote. Okay. Right. Yes. Um, Penny, would speak to the open space parking areas. It's all good. I guess it's all good. We we've, we've been asked by the selectmen if we could break it down, so I'm going to ask our consultant break, break down, it down the estimated cost of the different projects. For each one. There's four different areas we're going for. We're going for Damon, Higgins, Bates, and Crosby. And so I will have a price tag for each one of them. And then I was also asked to prioritize. So I do need to ask you people, I know what my priorities are, but we need to decide what our Priority. So just to back up, because maybe refresh everybody's yeah. memory that, um, you know, with CPC funds, we had about $320,000 in various projects that was unexpended. And the thought is that that money would get returned to the CPC fund, and then hopefully in turn they would vote to fund these different access and parking projects. But with all the engineering and design work that we've been doing that looks like if we were to do all these projects exactly the way that they're drawn out it could cost in the vicinity of a half a million dollars so we've gotten mixed um, feedback from different groups cpc th thought that it would be good to go for the whole piece and just get it done um we, penny went before the selectman we were in front of the selectman last, last night, night. And the selectmen were a little surprised that that was going to be that much money. And so the question was asked, could we maybe hold back on a couple, or what would it cost to do the different projects and see where they'd go? Um, and I think Penny and I are on the same page with the priorities. We really want to get our road and access into um, Crosby because we have no access to that property right now and at all. That's the most expensive. Um, it involves well, a wetlands sense, crossing you and all do that. Anything else until you get access. Right, yeah. and then Bates Lane, because it's well used and it would be a great spot. Then the other two projects, Higgins McAllister and um, Damon, we, if the commission, if the selectmen, if there's not enough support to do all of them, those two we might back off, and and wait a little bit, and then try to move forward with those. So. Mm -hmm. um, the other makes sense. expensive too. Yeah. So we're gonna. Um, we're still gonna need more money up. than the money that's being turned back, and it's not a given that because you're turning this money back, it would get reappropriated for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, we try to make a good case that we need this access. We gave up the access to Appleton Field when we purchased Crosby, and we've yet to get new access into so that. So, yep. In the end, they were the ones that had to sign off on that. We're all a team. Yeah, so we're just, um, I of course want it, I would like to see it all done, get it over and done with, but if we can only do one, it would definitely be Crosby. If we can do two, I'd love to do Crosby and Bates Lane. But like I said, Crosby is a big. I agree. That's, in, in itself, that's the killer. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. So, we will, um, be working on that and well, we're going to be working towards the special town meeting so it's going to happen and, and we learned today the special town meeting is tuesday november 14th the 14th yeah and deadline for articles 
to the selectmen mm -hmm. is September 19th. Yeah, we already. Oh, that's that's coming up quick. What is the deadline? I don't know if Karen knows that because September. Karen, that's interesting. I'll have to talk to Karen in the morning because Karen told me that keep working, separate everything, and not. Because we're not voting. CPC does not vote until the 25th on our Well, they might have project. to ramp up their vote. No, I understand that. I'm, yeah, you've been I'm shocked. Give her a call. Yeah, I will the, give her a call. Those deadlines were from Trisha today during a staff meeting. Yeah. The and 19th, you're saying? September, is they want to see things in the selectman's office so that public hearings can be held and warrants can be published and so on so forth. OK. Thank you. Thanks. And, um, just, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to get down to the Driftway Park lately, but the t pier at the Driftway Park is, is deteriorating pretty quickly. We need to spend some time and look at that. Um, and I do, there's a former member of the commission um, who served during the time that we were developing plans for the Driftway Park, and he's volunteered to work on that project and start to re regenerate some of the old plans, look at some of the things, and maybe start to work towards a project. So I told him I thought that that would really be helpful. Um, it's Mike Clark, who has worked with us before, and he's willing to just uh, work on that particular piece. Um, the trick is going to be finding some of that old information. There's a Horsley Whitting study, um, and then there's some stuff by a former agent, and uh, hoping that you and Carol will be able to put your fingers right on that baby. Oh, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll find it. Pat will get some did, extra did. time. <laughs> Amy's not going to come out of the park, so Pat will have some extra time. Maybe he can come and help <laughs> oh, you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we'll lost that file in Bruce, please. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, is this the trail that next to Dunkin' Donuts where you go straight? No, no, the this, is, the this is pier. further down with the fields and all that. And there's, a, yeah. there's an old Little pier, yeah. and it's that so pier's all wooden. Yeah. And really, nothing's been done to that in a while. And we need to really address that and see whether it's safe enough for folks to, you know, people fish off of it. Okay. So I think that's a piece that we have to circle back to. I've been talking with Mara Karen a little bit. She'd like to see some renewed interest. It's some that people see a lot of. And it's not right at the parking lot. It's, it's down further. It's, you you, it's you it's park there far. and then walk, walk down, down towards the river's it's edge. But we have some nice trails there. People use that field. It's a pretty pretty well used piece. Yeah. And it's our jurisdiction. One um, to have the kayak you. boat, small boat ramp is all there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been focused on other things and we got to circle back to that one. That's another I mean, we have a plan from Wesley Witten that show an amphitheater and all right. kinds of stuff, but we're not talking about maybe going to that extreme, but we'd like maybe to get... Maybe it's in there somewhere. All right. But is, is this something that you're thinking about just coming up with a plan to improve the area and then putting it uh, on a CPC? Yeah, I, I, well, I'd like to get out that... Get out that Horsley Witten plan. Take a look at some of the recommendations as a as a commission. Discuss yeah. what those things are. Yeah. See what we think is feasible, and then maybe we'll make a CPC application to yeah. to fund That's some of it. that. Yeah. Right. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm all for it. As soon as we kill a couple of the other ones. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> we're, we're slowly getting there. I don't know if I told you all, but all the CRs are with the state now, so it's. Wow. The waiting game is on. Wow. They, the drafts wow. have been sent in, and we're all out. You're going to get a raise. All, all yeah. our stuff we Double. put in, Double. we're in. <laughs> so it's now, we're in the queue, but it could be up to a year before we get it back. Right, because um, there's only one person at yes, the Yes, I, I know. But at least we're there. Yeah. We're, I mean, that's major. We're at the state level. So right. I'm, good for you, Penny. Thank you. I'm so excited. Good job. Yeah, and, uh, wow. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Wildman's Trust, Scott McFadden, he is wonderful to work with. Oh, that's great. He has really been a God sent to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Oh. How many uh, how many trees have we cut down for all the paper you've uh, copied? <laughs> all right. How's I'm that, out. Anybody have anything else? Well, <laughs> 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 
Field, a couple of quick things I thought you'd be interested in. Uh, starting with Oceanside seawall extension. Yeah. So, um, actually, last night, Kevin from DPW went and um, asked for uh, additional funding to extend the seawall and received it. So, now that they have the additional funding and they've got the equipment on site, they want to just continue one address that. further. Awesome. So um, the question would be how to keep the project moving without slowing them down, and um, you know what what kind of approvals do they need from us? Because obviously there's an order of conditions. So my thought would be. Uh, probably an after the fact amended order. Yeah, that's, oh, that, yeah. That, that he was a minor activity program. Yeah, no. right. <laughs> that's not minor. It could yeah. be minor modification or revised site plan with acknowledgement from the abutters, but then you don't get a public hearing. But I mean, so, so How fast do they want to do this, Amy? They want to continue. So oh, they, they, they pretty much don't want to stop. I get you. Know you. What I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can explore if we could take it as, I mean, I could call DEP and get their thoughts on it, say we really want to keep this rolling. Can we do it as a, um, you know, I don't know if it's a minor modification, but it's the same project. Sure. Encompassing a little, you know. And, but we couldn't area. just we couldn't amend their those orders. But would would that we could amend those orders? Would that work fast enough for what they're trying to do? Uh, you know, I'm I'm not sure. I have a call in to the engineer, so I'm sure that they're coming up with site plans. But you know, I mean, again, essentially, it's the same methodology to extend right. the wall. Everything's the same. So, because of that, I, I really do think you, you could probably take it on a site plan and incorporate it into the existing orders. But the only thing is that you're not getting a public hearing out yeah. of that. I think the so the amended order would. I mean, I guess that we could do a verbal right now to say, would you guys take it as an amended order, and then they could get on, you know, as early as um, either whatever. Potentially September, but probably first meeting in October, probably. as an after the fact. I'd encourage that. I, I think that would, to me, that would be, that would be consistent with what we've done in different yeah. um, pieces. You know, the town should be pretty much following the same guidelines, so that would be consistent with that, and at the same time, keep them moving um, as a public good. Um, certainly, we don't want to see that get stalled. No. Right, so if you guys take a vote on that now, then that would be um, within the guidelines of the request for amended orders. You know what I mean? Because you can do it yep. verbally or in writing, and since this is a town project, I think we can keep it rolling forward that way. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, it's just it's up to them to get the paperwork to us, get it advertised, and we'll hear them as soon as they're ready. Yep. So I make a motion that we extend no, that we amend. That we accept a request to amend. That we orders. accept a request to amend the order of conditions, order of conditions for the Oceanside Ocean. Seawall. Extension. Yes. Extension. Yeah. Second. Um, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. That's good. And then, okay, so just real quick, another one is we were out at uh, Mr. Kamen's property last <coughs> week. Oh, shoot. Sure. Yeah, photos, too. And I, I didn't missed, get to go. I saw the photos. Yeah. yeah, we actually, Pat, Lisa, and I were out there. You didn't go. Fine. Nobody last told Thursday me. They didn't want me to go. And it was eventful. We had tape measures in hand, and um, it was pretty evident that the work, the, the rock stock pile, and the Whose land area is it on? of disturbance is, is town land. Town could you land. find could you find a um a boundary or anything? No. Yeah. 
But he's found one. No, yeah. but, but there were other yeah. things in the field that we were able to measure off the plant from a shed, and then we were up in the, well, he was up in the woods, and yeah. But anyways, and, and Jerry admitted that the rocks were probably off his property, so. Not his. He actually admitted it was, he says, yeah, I think this is town land. Yeah, yeah, so, and, and, and he's agreed to move the rocks back onto his property, but then I guess the, the discussion is to what extent and what effort do we want him to go to um, basically repair the dis area of disturbance that he's got. It's got to repair. Uh, well, I mean, so, so we could... We told them that we would get back to them um, after we talked it up. Do you think you could put some more pear trees in that area? Uh, why not? No, so I, I think our he thought is in the that he needs to consult with the wetland professional wetland scientists and come up with a plan. He knows to, them by name. To rip. Yeah. To, uh, Running through them pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, he came here in a way. we got to get off the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one sitting here. Frank, you brought up the abutting properties, and they dump stuff over their fence, too, so they, yeah. they should do some cleaning up. And then he claims that some of the stuff we thought he did, they don't know, that was done by somebody else. Right. It, there is a disturbed area beyond the rocks. Tell him just to stay in his own property. Yeah, I mean, I think the area was But he doesn't grow. know where the property line right. is. Well, we we pretty much have it. Yeah. He's going to put that fence up. The, 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 what, the deer, deer fence? Proof, the deer proof mm -hmm. um, <sighs> fence is going to go up. I think it's a conservation you know, commissioner fence. It's electric. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And, I mean, I think keeping it simple is probably a good idea on this. I mean, we, we could have him bring the wetland scientists back up and, you know, maybe plant a little bit, but the, we don't want him to go back in there with a, with a, um, with, with whatever, his bobcat. I'd rather see him around, you know? come up with the money and somebody else does the... Well, that ain't gonna happen. The bear. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily work that way, so. Yeah. Do you guys want to think about that? We can talk about it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It might make sense for Frank to see it, because when you saw it, it looked pretty different than it does now. Okay. Yeah. No, I'd yeah. be happy to. Sorry, I didn't know you were going. I know you didn't want me to go out there with you, but. No, we, that ended up, we got postponed, and then we, the last minute. We yeah, 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 yeah. We don't take him with us. Um, <laughs> I didn't know about it either. Off the fence, though, yeah. Off the yeah. Well, it wasn't all there when I, I just, yeah. I walked in, one of the neighbors had given me permission, and I walked in, I've, I've seen it, but oh, it'd be yeah, good to get a handle on just where. Oh, it's changed again. Stuff is. <laughs> oh, okay. you did some more, Lisa? The one we right. down there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yep, let's, um, let's take another look. This is agent number five on this project. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.